All right, I hate YouTube. YouTube made me late. I was actually like two minutes early and then I hit the button and the button I guess didn't work. I don't know what's going on you guys, but welcome to the stream. In this stream, I'm gonna be designing my 2.0 UI for Final Fantasy 14 and uh, we're gonna get nerdy in here. We're going to be uh, theory crafting. We're gonna be getting into spreadsheets and all kinds of stuff. Hot keys, hot bars, everything. You know how it goes. So not gonna be a whole lot of gameplay in this one. Uh, so I expect viewership to drop off, but that's perfectly fine. This is a uh, just this is for the nerds. This is this is for you person still watching <laughs> uh so i'm excited i've been playing final fantasy 14 quite a bit and uh, i've been you know uh playing with this sort of 1.0 version of my ui and i've really been feeling like it's the time to upgrade and and, and reorganize stuff now that i've played more and so that's what i want to do here in the stream and uh yeah that's what we're going to get into but first a couple of things one if you missed it, I got this sweet new chair from Secret Labs. It's been uh, quite a bit of uh, fun uh, to rest in this chair. I'm excited to dig into some spreadsheets and uh, and see if, if this can keep me motivated and keep me going. Who am I kidding? I love spreadsheets. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then I got one other little thing here. I mentioned it in my last stream, but Aggie is going to be opening her Etsy shop here pretty soon. And uh, her first two items, she's going to be making beanies that are themed all around Final Fantasy XIV. So we got the first one here that's on my head. Uh, this one is actually themed around the logo for Endwalker. So if you take a look at the logo, you'll notice these colors are in there. She hand dyed this and, you know, crocheted it herself. She kicks ass at crochet. The next one that she's doing, she uh, started the dye for it today. It's going to be a paladin themed one. So it's going to have blues, whites, silvers, maybe even a little bit of gold. Uh, but I'm just kind of like repping these, promoing these uh, ahead of time, hopefully drum up a little excitement about it. Uh, and I'm going to be wearing one throughout the stream uh, unless it gets too hot. And then I'll take it off and my hair will look terrible, but that's all good. So yeah all right we got hemo we got Cass. we got rhythm how's it going you guys well, let's get in here and let's do it okay so theory crafting the ui now for me if you're not familiar with the the final fantasy 14 ui stuff i'm gonna give you a couple quick rules one uh you can't use add-ons two you're limited to the tools that they give you three the tools are pretty good, but still have some limitations. Four. That's as far as I got. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've got some rules that we have to abide by for uh, setting up our UI. So, first off, we've got our HUD layout section. We've got four different HUD layouts that we can utilize if we want to. And uh, along the way here, I think the main limitation that we have, there's two of them. One we have access to a total of 10 different hot bars. Okay, so whatever we do has to fit on 10 hot bars. Secondly, the hot bar configuration only has a few options. So if we look at hot bar three right here, we can configure it as a 12 by one, which is just a straight row. We could do a six by two, four by three, three by four, two by six, or a one by 12. So we can't do weird configurations. Like we can't do a three by three, uh, you know, cut off, but we could use like a three by four as a three by three if we didn't use the bottom buttons, et cetera, et cetera. So we're kind of limited in the layout of our hot bars based on those configurations. And we have, again, the 10 hot bars that we can use. Lost Soul, what's up? How's it going? Back to driving, look forward to this. Awesome, happy I can stream and you can uh, listen in while you're driving. So, congrats to Aggie, absolutely. Okay, so if we go into, I think it's character, character, or is it system? Let me double check. HUD, I think it's our character, no, hotbar settings. Okay, if we go into character configuration, hotbar settings, then we can go over here 
And one, you can turn on the hot bars here, but we're gonna do that through our uh, HUD layout anyway, so we don't need to worry about that too much. But what we can do over here is we can go to sharing. So sharing decides which hot bars are shared between our different jobs, whether that's Disciple of War, Magic, Hand, Land, whatever. So for example, just to show you what sharing means, this bar right here, uh, which you can't quite see. I think I'm gonna move me up here for this stream just because I know it's a little off-putting. Actually, we'll flip me this time. Uh, let's go ahead and flip me around here. Oop, there we go. So down here, this is a shared hot bar. So right now I am on the Dragoon. If you look at these hot bars, when I switch classes, these are gonna change. This is going to change, but this is going to stay the same. So if I come back and I go to like Samurai and then I switch back over, this changed, this changed, these are the same. That's because this hotbar is shared. So when we're in here in our character configuration, hotbar settings, sharing, you'll see that uh, all the hotbars I currently have are shared except for one, two, and three which change uh, from character to, or from class to class, job to job. And if we go into the HUD layout, you'll see I have hotbar one, hotbar two, and hotbar three. So those are some of the limitations we have to work with, right? We've got 10 hotbars. We've only got certain configurations we can work with. And some of our hotbars can be shared or we can have them all independent. So that's what we're working with. So. Let's go into a couple of more observations I've made just about my own play style and kind of how I want to have things laid out. Based on what I've been able to see in Final Fantasy XIV, you got some big categories. If you guys are familiar with how I did the UIs for World of Warcraft, you know that I had things like, hey, this is my primary abilities. These are my defensive cooldowns, my offensive cooldowns, my CCs, uh, you know, my travel skills. All that kind of stuff, I had it laid out into categories. And so I've approached Final Fantasy XIV in the same way of trying to break things down into these categories. And what I have seen is there are some categories that you can put these things into. So one, you do have big defensive cooldowns. You have big offensive cooldowns. You usually have a ranged or movement uh, skill or set of skills. Then you have your core single target skills you have core um, AOE skills or multi-target skills. And then you usually have the core skills that interact with your job gauge. So those are kind of the broad categories that we have. And I wasn't kidding. I told you guys we're spreadsheeting it up and that is exactly what we're doing here. So I'm gonna make sure, let's see, you guys can see the F column. So we'll work in the F column here. So uh, I'm gonna lay this out. And I know that on my bars, I need to cover my main single. I need to cover my AOE, uh, my main AOE. I need to cover my job. Let's say job gauge. If I could type, uh, we need to cover our CC. We need to cover our ranged ability. We need to cover our defense we need to cover our offense what else are we missing anything i think that oh and we also final fantasy has a uh a, an extra category which i would call um role utility right so our role utility skills have to get worked in there somewhere we also want to include our limit break uh in there as a skill and then i think we're also gonna wanna have some menus, which we'll get to a little bit later. Right now I'm looking at how do I lay out my, my combat skills, my hotkeys. You have something on your shoulder? Uh, yes, I do. It's it's my hair, <laughs> unless you mean something else. If it's a spider, I'm gonna freak the hell out. <laughs> uh, so these are the categories we have, right? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine. I don't really count like nine roll utilities will get baked into here for the most part and limit break will just get put somewhere uh, along the way. Now, also for me, 
I've noticed when playing that it's pretty easy for me to hit one through five. And then I've been using shift one through five and control one through five. Now, a good example for this is going to be the scholar. Oh, you mean my, com I have something on my shoulder in game. Yeah, it's my little red panda. He's so cute. I'd rather have a red panda right now than my hair. So, okay, so here's a good example. My scholar, I've got this set up. So I have, you know, a bar here, a bar here, and a bar here. And essentially, uh, the bottom bar is my main hotkeys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Then I have uh, shift plus those hotkeys. Then I have control plus those hotkeys. And I put the stuff that I cast the most on the bottom bar where I just have to hit the one ability. Then I put uh, the next set that I need to cast a lot on that second row. And then the third row is stuff that I still need to cast and be able to hit pretty quickly, um, but don't necessarily need to use as frequently or maybe have a little bit more leeway in when I hit it. Woot, woot, woot. Did you name it? Can I name it? I don't think I can name it. So then I also have been using my Q, R, Q, E, R, and F hotkeys as well. Uh, and I've been thinking about using shift and control on those too uh, to possibly see if I could expand out the number of things that I can hit with a hotkey as opposed to clicking. Now I have been clicking skills in this area and also skills on this portion of the hot bar just because usually those are things that I have there that are on like a two minute cooldown or something. I don't need to hit them very often. And so once I hit them the one time, they're kind of over and done. So that's the stuff that I, I know as far as hot bars and hot keys go. Oh, just pick a name. No, I haven't read it. He's lesser Panda, but he's greater in our hearts. <laughs> Oh man, the corny stuff you can say. Uh, yeah, I carried over that concept to Final Fantasy XIV thanks to use set, offensive, Q, E, R, F, and defensive, Z, X, C, V for me, G, T, and shift plus for whatever I, else I need. Cool. Uh, that's kind of what I hoped uh, people would be able to do, and now I'm basically just going to show my version of it and building that into uh, this new version of the UI. So, getting back over here, we know what we've got um to deal with so what i'm actually going to do uh let's see ff xiv hot bar setup i think that's uh this right here this cross hot bar no that's not what i want no not you where are you at yes here we go okay this is uh xiv bars dot <laughs> Dot com. Uh, I'll post this in the chat just in case you guys want to take a look at it as well. So what this will let you do is sort of plan out a hot bar, but kind of not really. If you have a weird hot bar layout, it doesn't really work. But I can, for example, uh, click on, let's say, uh, let's say we'll do, you know, like Gunbreaker. This will load a little menu planner and I can click hot bars. And even though I can't quite, uh, you know, group the hot bars in different ways, I can go ahead and kind of lay them out the way that I'd like to have them. And this is kind of a little shortcut to being able to do this, but I find this is really good once you're actually into the job itself. So my nerdy spreadsheet self wanted to jump in here and kind of map out how I would set up my actual bars with the UI setup and the limitations that I have on my hot bars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to hot bar or HUD layout one. This one is default. We're gonna make sure everything is default. We're gonna save it. Okay, so this is the HUD as it starts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unlock this, make sure I clear off my hot bar you can double right click. I find this a little faster than the qu uh, click and drag. Okay, so we're gonna do this.
Okay. Then we're going to go in and we can go to, I believe it's character configuration, hotbar settings, display. And then we should be able to display hotbar numbers uh, and uncheck hide unassigned slots. Okay. So that's going to give us our hot bars so we can look at them even when they're not filled. Now have fun, Titan. Catch you later. Okay. So we've got our action bars showing. Uh, the next thing we want to do is kind of figure out uh, how many bars we're going to need individual on each of our classes, right? Because uh, I like having shared bars wherever I can. So we're gonna do that by kind of figuring out what our skills are gonna be. Now I have a I have a, a, a idea for this, so we're just gonna roll with that for now. But essentially what I think I'm gonna do is I wanna stick with the uh, idea of I hit one, I hit shift one, and I hit control one. <laughs> Got it. Right, so this would be one, this would be shift one, and this would be control one in the square here. And that's probably gonna go all the way over to six, right? So let's go ahead and let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna have three sections here. And we're going to go ahead and fill this in with a gray. So this will represent each of the buttons on our little section there. Now, the thing that I want to figure out here is, do I display these as, uh, how do I, how do I set these up? Okay. So we obviously looked and we saw that we have very limited options. So if we take hot bar number one and we come in to edit it, how are we going to get three bars that are three high and six wide? Well, let's see. We can get three high this way, but that's going to give us eight if we have two hot bars. We can get six and two, but that's going to leave us with one left over, et cetera, et cetera. And this is why I basically had had these laid out uh, as eight across instead of six across. And the reason that I wanted to try to get away from that is I don't really have the, uh, I don't have a fourth, um, alternate key modifier key that's the word i was looking for i don't have a fourth modifier key that i want to use for this hot bar like i don't want to press like alt one or something weird like I, like right now i'm good with control and shift you know so i don't really want to have that extra there so i have a couple of options here okay i can either extend the bar out one more row and then I can do uh, I can either extend it out one more like this and we can do three and three right so we would have hot bar one and then we go grab hot bar two and we change that to a four by th or a three by four save and we would have something like this hot bar one hot bar two right so let's go ahead and save that and it would look something like this so we'd have six Six, six, six. So we could do that. Or alternatively, the other option we have here is we could take hop bar one and we could change it to a four by three, which would keep the three high that we wanted, but then it would give us two extra rows on the end. I'm not quite sure which one I like better at the moment. For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine abilities, I like using shift for combos. On my warrior, for example, three will be overpower, shift three will be mithril tempest, six is storm's path, and shift six is storm's eye. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of that's basically how I lay it as well, out, in a manner of speaking as well. Uh, so I don't know if I like adding the extra top row, or if I like having the two on the side, like the two extra. So we'll see what we want to do with the rest of our abilities uh, once we're set there. But we know those are the two possible configurations that we could have. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do some 
dotted line borders here just to kind of show that these are the other possibilities that we have. Okay, so we could put some here or some here, depending. So that's gonna be like our main bar. I know for sure that's what we're gonna put there. One of these or one of these. Mine are all one through six letters and function keys. That makes sense. Can we share pics somewhere because the camera can't pick up the beanie? Uh, I have the picture, I can share the picture. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the camera can pick up the beanie. What are you talking about? It looks good on camera. It just looks better IRL. Okay, so I know I'm gonna have the main hotbar uh, in one of those two configurations. And then I wanna have my QWER combo thing going as well, possibly with the uh, modifiers for that. So that's Q, E, R, and F. So that's gonna give me four with three high. And we already know where is hot bar number three? There you are. So we already know that we have a configuration with this. Four across, three high that will work perfectly uh, with this one. So that's gonna be that hot bar. So we'll hop over here and we're gonna create that hot bar. And it's gonna be four across and three high. And I drop that background in there, so we'll have that one. And so this is gonna be our main bar. This is gonna be our uh, Q, W, or Q, E, R, F bar, our curf bar. I'm wondering whether to implement control, but shift seems to be enough. Not sure how many more abilities there are. Uh, 50 after on warrior. So there's a, there's a fairly good amount. It just kind of depends on your layout. I think most classes end up with roughly the same amount of abilities uh, towards the end, but you could easily go over to, uh, if you do Final Fantasy 14 jobs, you can check out the job guide for Warrior and get on here and you can run through and see uh, how many of these are active so if it has this little thing it means it won't be assigned to a hot bar which usually means a different ability turns into it but if you look at this so you're at level 50 just uh just to give an idea plus i also want a ballpark number for how many abilities i'm going to have anyway we've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen at level 50. Okay, and I mentioned this before, the jobs get way crazier between 50 to 80. So you have 15 active abilities at level 50. All right, so 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, minus two. Uh, so you're looking at 24. So you're gonna get another nine abilities there. Plus, keep in mind you have all your roll actions as well, which is another seven on top of that. So you're looking at 31 abilities uh, all total. Plus, on top of that, you're going to want your potions. You're going to want your limit break. Um, all those kind of like little supplemental things. That does seem a little bit on the low end, I think, um, compared to other classes. But yeah, I, I think warrior might just be a little bit more on the simple side, and that's okay. Um, if we, you can also kind of look here at job actions and get a feel for how many of there are. We've got what five rows. Let's check out something like, mm, like Dark Knight. Five rows. Uh, let's see, Gunbreaker has got six rows. What about Ninja? Ninja's got five rows. So yeah, it looks like you know overall five to six rows of abilities, but some of those abilities are not going to be active ones. So. Let's see. Why do you keep saying not like this? Am I missing something? <laughs> oh, man. 
Is limit break a party wide buff for more damage? Uh, limit break is something that your party builds up and then one person can spend. So you don't just spend it like on your own. Okay, so we've got our main bar. We've got our QERF bar that we're doing as well. Uh, and I think uh, we're probably going to want a bar that's going to cover some of our um, big cooldowns. And I'm not really sure how I want to break those down yet because that's going to be different from class to class. So I think maybe something generic uh, will give me the most options. But generally, those are going to go into uh, some categories. So we know here with our Q, E, R, F. So Q is going to be the defensive stuff that I use. Right? We know E is going to be the offensive. We've got R. Oh, R, which is, uh, I'm just going to call it mobility. It's also, well, we'll do, it's ranged slash mobility. And then F is going to be CC. So those are the main categories that I have for those. Now, what happens is that a lot of times um, you have more ability, more defensive abilities as a tank or more offensive abilities as a DPS or uh, more ranged abilities as a different class. And so you run out of room on the bar for you to add stuff like that. But usually that's because you have like three or four abilities or something that have a one, two, three minute cooldown that you're not gonna be pressing all that often. And you don't really need to have like necessarily hot keyed. Um, you could click on them. I click on them, you know, until I get into content that's difficult enough that I need to be able to hot key them, I'm totally fine with clicking them. So that makes me think that there should probably be another bar and I, maybe it should just mirror this one, you know, and just be a bar that we click stuff that we want to click, but in the same category. So let's, let's plan on that for right now. We can always tweak it and change it. Depends on which job uses the limit break. Droon, hey, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. First time I think I've seen you. Uh, healers can raise every KO'd player, for example. Yep, and uh, melee just does like a big attack on the boss. Uh, range does like a big AOE. And I think tank provides like a defensive buff for everybody. I'm not sure, do the magic, do the magic DPS do something different? They probably do. All right, so this is gonna be the uh, we're going to call this the QRF plus bar. And then let's go ahead and make sure. Let's go ahead and we're going to plug in some stuff over here. So this is going to be uh, single. This is going to be AOE main. And this is going to be our job gauge main stuff okay and then we'll go ahead and delete out some rows here kind of bring that up in particular okay so we know we've got these bars here so that's giving us at least three bars right now per class now if we're looking at our job guide over here so let's check out, let's check out for Scholar because I've been healing with Scholar a lot and I'd be happy to like update my, my bars for that. So we have a ton of abilities, but a bunch of these are also, uh, yeah, it's just a lot of abilities. <laughs> uh, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We got 33 plus our roll actions, which it's always six, so 41. So we need to be able to fit 41 plus a potion plus a limit break at least. So 43, we're shooting for like 45, 45 buttons. It's kind of what we're, I think we want to shoot for. So right here we got 12. Uh, or did I, did I go one extra here? Three. Did I go one extra there? Uh, so we could go, it's either three and four up or four and three down, okay. So one, two, three, four and three down. Okay, I need some more on the side here. That's my bad. 
So we have one, two, three, four by three, one, two. All right, not bad. Let's get rid of those. Let's add two more here just to make sure we got everything. Nope, wrong color. Not that it matters. We're going to change the colors up on this anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and add our borders back in. All right, so we could go here. All right, let's make sure my brain is functioning correctly. Okay, so we can either go four by three. Oh, okay, that's what I was doing. My bad. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> I played myself. Uh, okay, so either, my bad, either we're going to add on these two rows or we're going to add on these rows. Okay, yeah, cool, we got it confuse myself all right so this is going to be our uh clickables for defense now oh, let me let me keep things consistent defensive offensive ranged and mobility and CC. Now, in all likelihood, that's not actually going to be the case because you don't normally have like six CC abilities, but we're just going to line them up that way. Um, so we're going to have 12. 12 is 24. And we're going to have 48. So between four bars, we'll have enough for like as many abilities as we might possibly need uh, coming from our actual like job. So that tells me that we can use all the other bars as shared bars if we want to, which we probably will want to. But let's start with figuring out the combat stuff. So let's go in and we're going to go character configuration, hot bars, sharing. We are going to make the first four hot bars not shared between classes. Okay, and we're going to apply. So we know we're going to have our... We'll make hot bar one and hot bar two are gonna be our main bar. Hot bar three is gonna be our QERF. And then we're gonna have hot bar four as our uh, mirror to hot bar three. So we're gonna take hot bar four and we're gonna make it a four by three. Save that. So we're gonna have something like hot bar three Hot bar four. I don't care about the cross hot bar. And we're going to have hot bar one and hot bar two. Okay. So we're going to have something along these lines. Now, the decision we have to make with this is do we go three high or do we go four high? And looking at this, I think I'm okay with just going three high. And then maybe having these abilities off to the side, just being kind of like extras. So let's go ahead and let's adjust hot bar two. And let's make it a three, a four by three. Okay. And then we'll plug it together here. Yep. Good enough. We'll make the micro adjustments as we need to later. Okay, so this is going to be our layout for that. For this, let's go ahead and remove everything. Okay, so I think this is going to be the basis of what we're going to work with. So let's go in and update this. So we're going to get rid of those borders. We're going to get rid of these borders. We're going to go ahead and extend this out and we're going to fill it in. Okay. So we've got our main bar. We're good to go. Okay. So let's see if we can set this up for the scholar. It's crooked. I know it's crooked. I know. <laughs> uh, okay. So 
let's see how this plays out when we do it with uh, Scholar. So remember, we're going to ignore the current hotkeys on the bar. And we're just going to put the actual stuff that we want to use. Okay. Uh, so, actually, let's not do Scholar. Let's you do a DPS class. That's a little bit easier. Let's do, uh, we'll do my Samurai. Since I'm pretty familiar with Samurai, I can set this up pretty quickly, I would assume. What just happened? <laughs> what happened to, uh, oh, okay. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Okay. What? Stop doing that. Why are you doing that? Okay. Okay. It's being weird. Not sure why it's being weird here. Four by three. Okay. Cool yourself. Oh. 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 Okay. I see. If you right click on the two, it changes the configuration out here. That's uh, kind of annoying, and I, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> Let's. Uh, we're going to give enough space right now so that we don't accidentally click on the two when we're clearing bars. Did not know that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into our HUD. We're gonna grab hot bar nine. All right, seven, eight, nine, five, six. So we should have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and where is number 10 down here? Okay, so let's go into each of these. We're gonna turn them on. And we're going to uh, group our abilities and then sort them. So let's go in here and we're just going to do a four by three for hot bar seven. Uh, hot bar eight. We're going to do a four by three. Hot bar five. Four by three. I'm going to destroy all these anyway because I'm totally changing them. Okay, hot bar six, four by three, hot bar 10 is already a four by three. Okay. All right. Damn you. <laughs> Damn you with your numbers. Stop. I'm not trying to click you. Four by three. Piece of crap. <laughs> Is there a trick to get the hot bars to align with the grid? There's a hot key you can use uh, that we'll get to once we're uh, tweaking stuff. Official. All right. And the main reason I'm doing this grouping is just because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything and I have enough space for everything before I start putting stuff on bars. Okay. Clear it out. Okay. So we got Hakaze. That's part of our main Combo, so is Jimpu. Third eye reduces damage taken by the next attack. We're gonna throw that into defense stuff. We've got MP, that is a ranged thing. Shifu's part of our main combo. Fuga is part of our uh, AoE. Gecko is main. Iejitsu is main. Angetsu is AoE. Kasha is main, Oka, AoE, Yukikaze is main, uh, Meikyo is a longer cooldown 
utility. So we're going to throw that in here. Uh, Chitin is part of our, it's like an offensive buff. Uh, Gyotin is ranged movement stuff. Yatin is ranged movement stuff. Merciful Eyes restores our HP. Meditate is a kind of big utility thing, which we'll put here. Uh, Shinten is a big offensive ability, which we are dropping over here. Qten is AoE. Uh, Saigan is a single target offensive kind of thing. Hagakure is utility. Uh, Ikishoten is also, it's like utility slash offense. Gurin is offense, uh, but it's AoE. Uh, Sine is offense. Subami Gaishi is also offense. Uh, we've got Shoha, which is situational offense. And then these don't get added to our bar. And then if we go into our role, we've got defense with second win. We've got CC with leg sweep. We've got defense and healing with bloodbath. We've got utility with faint. Utility with arm's length. And then we have utility with true north. So that's all of our abilities. So let's see if they fit in with what we're trying to do here. So Hakaze is the start of our combo. And then I usually do Hakaze into Shifu Kasha. And then Hakaze into Jinpu. And then Gecko. And then Hakaze into Yukikaze. And then we have our Iejitsu, which is actually the main like offensive thing I think we want to hit all the time. So that works for me. Then we've got our AoE, which I like to put on the shift key. So we got Fuga into Mangetsu into Oka. And then we have um, our Hisatsu Kyuten, which is our cheaper Kenki Spender. And we've got Gurin, which is our stronger one. So we can plug that in there. Then we've got our defensive abilities. Let's see our shortest cooldown. I think we want, uh, do we have, did we miss eyes open? Did I miss a lot? Oh, third eye. Okay. Third eye is what we want for defense. Uh, well, yeah, it reduces the amount of damage we take from the next attack by 10%. And then we can either heal ourselves with it or we can use it for an attack. Uh, and since I kind of like having that all lined up together, I'm going to put that all there. This is something specific to Samurai, right? So I'd change this for a different class. But on Samurai, I know, okay, hit Q. If I get the buff, then I can hit Shift Q or Control Q. Most of the time, you're going to use Merciful Eyes um, for the heal. So that makes sense to me. And then we do have some longer cooldowns. So we could throw Second Wind and Bloodbath in here. And uh, I'll probably have the shorter cooldown ones at the top because they'll be closer to where I'm clicking than the bottom one. one bottom ones will. Okay. So then we have our movement skills. Uh, so we do have uh, a ranged attack right here. And then we have a charge. And then we have a back step. So we can line those up. And then... We have our one CC, and this is where I was saying, you don't really have six CC skills. Uh, so it might be overkill uh, to have like all this up here, but we'll figure it out. We'll see if four bars is overkill. Uh, so we got these set up here, and then we come in and we've got some more offensive skills that we can use. So we do have uh, Hisatsu Kaiten, which we're gonna use a lot. So I think I'm actually gonna put that on control one. So that's a buff. And you're usually going to cast this um, 
you need to have the kinky in order to cast it and you're usually going to cast it before you hit your Iejutsu. So that'll be a quick cast there. Then we have our single target attack that we need Kenki Gauge for. So we could either put that here or I think we'll put it here. Then we have Shinten, which is actually the weaker version of that. So we're gonna flip flop those. And then we have Subami Gaishi, which will repeat the EA Jitsu we just used. So I think I actually like that one here. And then Shoha, let's do something like that. I think, I think, maybe not. We might just put them all in the top row. So you're gonna be able to use this one a lot. Uh, this one has a two minute cooldown. Subami Gaishi, we wanna be able to hit fairly easily. So I think we'll actually flip flop those. And then Shoha, something like that. Okay, then we have all of our utility abilities as well. And we can kind of plug these in wherever based on cooldown. I think basically anything that has a minute or more can just go on this bar here. So any of these skills, like these should all have less than a minute. Uh, so everything else can go up here. So let's just, uh, we're gonna just toss them over here for right now. So we have a couple of options with the hot bars, right? We can fill these up with other abilities we wanna use. We could fill these up with other abilities that we wanna use. And we could probably get rid of a hot bar if we did that, but we wouldn't be quite as organized as we are here where everything's pretty clear and pretty laid out. But we'd also be missing out on some hot keys here. So I don't hate the way this looks, um, but I'm also like a little bit concerned that, that maybe this is going to be overkill. So let's look at a tank and a healer and just see how that looks. So we'll hop over and we'll do a uh, gun breaker. So let's go to gear sets. Oops, my bad. Uh, let's, we'll at least do gun breaker. So we'll switch to Gunbreaker. Let's go ahead and clear these out. And we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of organize them and then put them back. Oh yeah, we gotta get our potion and our limit break in there too. Which we definitely had room for in the other one. Okay. All right, so jumping in here. We can get our roll abilities out of the way real quick. We got defense. We got CC. We've got utility. We've got more CC. We've got, I look at it as defense. It's basically defense, utility, and then utility. So in our actual actions, we got part of our main combo. No Mercy is a offensive buff, so I'll put that here. We got Brutal Shell, part of our combo. Camouflage is defense. Demon Slice is AoE. Royal Guard is just literally just a toggle. Uh, Lightning Shot is uh, ranged. So we'll stick that there. Danger Zone is a offensive one. Solid Barrel is part of our combo. Burst Strike is part of our job gauge stuff. Nebula is defense. Demon Slaughter's AoE. Uh, Aurora is defense. Super Bowl Eyed is crazy defense. We're gonna move this down here. Sonic Break is gonna be offense. Rough Divide is ranged. Ashing Fang is part of our job gauge. Savage Claw, part of our job gauge. Wicked Talon is part of our job gauge. Bow Shock is AOE. Heart of Light is defensive. 
Heart of Stone is also defensive. Uh, continuation is an ability that we just use. It's kind of weird. It's on here. I'm not sure. I'm going to throw this into utility. Also, I realized I was putting my defensive stuff in the utility. So let's get that out of there. Oops. Put that in utility. Faded Circle. AoE. Uh, Bloodfest is utility. Blasting Zone. Offense. And then these don't go on our action bar. So again, let's go ahead and try setting this one up. So we got our main combo. We've got our AOE. This one has a cartridge cost, so we'll put that there. And we have, oh, I know why continuation is on the bar. It's my bad. We got our uh, main cartridge spending combo there. Uh, then we've got our, <laughs> we've got eight defensive abilities. And as you can see, we've only got four or six slots here. So this is one of those situations where it takes up way more than it has. Uh, so let's go ahead. We have our ranged. And we're gonna put in here, we've got our CC. These are easy enough. Okay, this tank stance is just a toggle, so I literally just throw this anywhere where I can just click it. Uh, and then we have continuation is actually a offensive ability we're going to use because it turns into a, a an offensive ability. And then we have four more offensive abilities we can plug in. So yeah, it's looking to me like overall... Let's see, what do we have? Okay, so this is 60 seconds offensive buff. So we're not gonna need to hotkey that one. We've got a 30 second attack, a 60 second damage over time attack. Danger zone is actually an upgrade. So yeah, we've got basically, boom, boom. That's all the offense setup. And then we've got our taunt, uh, which is basically just a utility that we'll put somewhere. Arms length again, utility, shirk is utility. And then we've got blood fest, which is kind of offensive. And then we have all of these defensive abilities to add. So we have our region. We've got super bowl eyed, which we definitely don't want to click on accident. We've got 25 seconds heart of stone. Okay. We've got our ramparts. So if we start plugging these in, we kind of run out of space. And we've got plenty of extra space over here where we could work stuff in. So maybe uh, we should do what I normally do which is we'll move some of this stuff down here. Something like that. And then we can move a lot of these tank abilities up to the top row or the utilities to the top row. So if we leave these here, we're going to have these all hotkeyed. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. I, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Do you think we need... Uh, to get rid of this or keep it? Do we work more stuff in here and in here? So my problem with this is I want to be consistent across my all my uh, jobs because I want to know if I hit control this, it's going to do this particular thing, just like I did with Opie where I'm like, if I hit Q and I spin an ability, I know that ability is going to help me live in some way. So I like the idea that, uh, I, I really like the idea of main combo AOE and then job associated stuff here potentially, or it could be main stuff, job stuff, and then, uh, AOE at the top. Since generally you use less AOE, uh, anyway. So it could be something like moving these up here, 
and then putting my job skills here. And I mean, that fits really nicely because I'm Gunbreaker. Right, and I don't have like a bunch of other stuff that I need to do. So maybe actually what we're doing is we're making this side chunk like an extra section for really, really long cooldown stuff. Go for consistency. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's what I want to do. I want to do like main combo, anything that has to do with my job gauge, AOE across the top. Then I want my QER. And I think I just keep it consistent with what makes sense. And anything else can either go in this bar or it can go on this side. And I think the rule that I'll make there is the stuff on this side is all stuff that's going to be like more than a minute cooldown. So for example, this has a 360. It would go there. 90, 60, 90, 25, 90, 90, 60, 120 we would put that over here yeah so like anything over 90 seconds that i don't need to have hot keyed so for example i might need to have shirk hot keyed or macroed or something um but chances are I, I won't and i could just click it so then this would be consistent these would be my main dps one or sorry uh defensive ones that i want to have hot keyed because i can hit them a lot um and then these up here would be just other abilities that I might want to possibly click on. 90 seconds or less. I'm going to be using those basically every fight. And so I can just click them and keep on going. Now, does that make sense if we switch back over to Samurai? So for Samurai, uh, we'll put our AOE at the top. Okay, so that's AOE. Anything having to do with our job gauge is gonna go next, uh, which really is the abilities that are here. The exception to that is we have our EA Jitsu over here. But like, uh, I think we want something more like, yeah, like this. That looks pretty good. And then here we've got defense, we've got range, we've only got the one CC, so we don't put anything else there. We've only got the one offensive skill here. We can put Subami Gaishi and Shoha there. And then that makes a little bit more sense to me. That's all AOE type stuff. Keep it consistent. And then over here, anything that's got Super long cooldown. We'll get pulled off. Yeah, I think that I think that makes sense. And then we would kind of sort this stuff. And I think uh, this would be CC and utility. I would always have a CC in the hotkey, but then I could have uh, utility above that. So that's where I could put uh, like this one here. Um, and then I could put like any of these here, but those are all utilities. And then I think, you know, stuff like this is kind of whatever. It'll go over here. Something along those lines, I think, is kind of where I want to end up. Because you switch jobs a lot. Yes, I do. I definitely do. So I think I like something something like that. That makes sense. So let's go back over here. So we're actually going to do uh, job gauge main. AOE main. And then defense, offense, range, mobility, CC slash utility and then cc slash utility although i actually think i might just like this as a short cooldowns and then we're gonna make this chunk long cooldowns Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and block this out. So we're gonna have our uh, main bar. We're gonna have our job bar. We're gonna have our AOE bar. We're gonna have our long cooldowns over here. Then we're gonna have our defense. Offense, ranged, and our utility. And then our short cooldowns, I think we'll just mix and match. However, I think that'll be fine. I think that'll be fine. So let's, let's get this into position. And uh, we'll just go through and make sure it works. Okay, so we're going to go to system and we're going to drag some of this stuff out of the way over here. Go back to hot bars. Let's go to hot bar one. Okay, so here's what we want. We want to go back into character configuration. We want to go to display, hide undecided slots, and we want to hide that damn hot bar number. Tired of clicking on that thing accidentally. Okay. Okay. So let's jump back into the HUD. We're going to line up our hot bars. We'll go right there and we'll line this one up right there save and make sure that looks pretty good i think it does but it's entirely too high so let's do the same thing but let's move it down we can probably go down here okay i also don't care about this one being a hundred percent we could probably go eighty percent I even be able to go 60. We'll go 80. Let's go 80%. Line it up. Hot bar to you. We'll go 80%. And we'll line it up. There we go. Okay, so we got our hot bar right there, our main stuff that we're gonna be uh, using. So this is the hot bar for stuff that has a hot key. Now one, two, three, four, five is pretty good. Six, I don't know about six. I wonder if we actually just pulled this one over here and extend it. Did we do three? Like three in a row, just one big long bar? We might just do bit one big long bar. Let's see how it looks. I'm doing that tomorrow, hiding the numbers. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Okay, so let's take hot bar three. Okay, so hot bar three, hot bar three we have is a three by four. Yep, that's fine. Um, so let's adjust this one to 80%. Save it. Let's move one. We'll put two. Right there. We'll put hot bar one. close feels like really hard to get this perfect that's definitely not perfect kind of pisses me off okay let's try this again yeah it's just hard to get two to line up here Uh, 
looks about right. So close. That's about as close as we're going to get it, I think. All right. Damn you. There's a couple hot cookies that we can use, but they don't work quite perfectly. Uh, let's see. So shift will let us snap it to the grid. I think I got it that time. But with this weird like hot bar in the middle thing. It's not quite wanting to do it. Okay, let's see. Is that right? Oh no, they're too close. Son of a bitch. Are they too close? Yeah. They're too close. Damn it. Okay, that looks... No! <laughs> Still too close. Maybe I'm okay with having a break in that one. Actually, that's got it laid out pretty well. Yeah, that looks about right. Do I like that? I don't know if I like it, but I want to try it that way. So then we're going to take uh, our other one here. Oh, that does kind of make this area harder to click. That's fine. I think we'll move that stuff up here anyway, which... Oh, at which point... Ah, we don't even need the other side, do we? Okay. This is what I do when I make my UI. I just, like, go back and forth on this shit, and I'm like, is this the way I do it? I don't know. So if we took all that out, that would leave us with six, ten rows. Ten rows. So if we went into the HUD... We've got six here and four here, so we need to line it up. So five is the one right in the middle. And then we line this one up. Mm, right there. Then we would line this one up. Yeah, so we could basically do that. Now, how does that work? Okay, that makes it so two is over top of three. I'm just getting into crazy land with this now. All right, let's keep it to two. Two aligns up with the grid really nicely. I think that causes more problems than it fixes. So let's do that, and then we'll throw this one over here as well. We'll figure out where this one goes when we figure out where we want to position number four. Now, number four, I'm not crazy about it being 100. We'll take it down to 90. I still want it to be clickable. Definitely want it to be clickable. But we can move this around and position it somewhere else. Um, and I wonder, do we want it to be... I think I want to change the shape of this one to like a six by two, maybe, um, and save that. And then what I'll do with this one is I will only fill this side up with the stuff that I need. That way it keeps a small footprint. So that's all I'll see for clicking stuff instead of you know, stuff in weird columns and everything. And then I can grab this one and maybe bring it, you know, up under here. Just kind of save it. So it looks like that. Maybe. Or I might just bring this down here. So it's in line. Just keep it like that. 
I think I, I think I actually like that. There's a, a gap here that helps me know that this is my other set of hotkeys. If I drag something down, even if I put something down here, I still have a nice little gap. I think I like this. Hiding numbers is a big relief. Late nights and iced coffee is making my hot bars look like a roller coaster. <laughs> Getting the hot bars lined up. Yep. Do three long bars stacked on top of each other. They will line up better. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I can't do three long bars because then it goes 12, 12, 12. And that's way more than I need um, on the 12, 12, 12. Unless you're talking about putting... Uh, you know, all three bars together. But I think I, I think I do like it this way. I think I like the way this looks. Yeah. I'm not sold on this, the size or the configuration, but I like the positioning. Okay. So we'll figure out some more hot bar stuff in a bit. Let's get the rest of our UI set up. Um, I think we do need to adjust this though. I think I'm still going to drop this down to like 80. I don't know. It's just too big. And man, let's just, we'll go back to it. Go back here. Just for consistency's sake. Let's go right there. I'll save. Uh, so what I want to see is, is that the clickable area? Oh shit, I'm in trouble. Click defense. Oh no, bloodbath. Hmm. I'm actually going to change this and we're going to do a three by four. No, you son of a bitch. That was the wrong one. Okay, hot by four. Okay, we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do three by four. I think that puts it into a space where it's easier for me to get to all the abilities because I don't have to go as far to the right without it being absolutely crazy. And then what I'll do is I'll just line these up with this as the preference so they go kind of this way. Yeah, I like that. I've never really drifted too far off from the norm from the default. Personally, I've got three 12 bars and a cube on the right side next to them. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> I mean, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Like at all. Okay, so uh, next, I haven't really had many problems with like where my HP bar was. So I think I'm going to keep that the way I had it before. So we're going to go system. We're going to grab the parameter bar. Um, and we're going to just center that right there, basically at the character's feet. Uh, we can go into settings and really all we can do here is just change the size, but um, I like having it just there at 100%. Kind of lines up nicely with the, the buffs. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like having like the, the box essentially is what I'm getting there. Now, uh, is that what we want or do we want? I think we want the cast bar above that. So let's go to HUD, get our parameter bar. We're actually going to put it here. Man, does that look centered to you that's the other thing that drives me crazy is i can't tell <laughs> like when their ui stuff is centered okay i definitely need a little bit more space there we go and then we'll put the progress bar so it lines up right here now that should not overlap with the health bar but let's check uh we'll just throw mount roulette no, I can't mount here. Uh, let's see. Let's go somewhere we can mount real quick. I say real quick, but we oh, we'll just teleport. 
I'll go to South Shroud. Change up the music anyway. Even though I really do like the music in New Gradania, not gonna lie. Okay, so yeah, that looks fine. That looks perfectly fine. Casting, not roulette. Boom. Yep, that works for me. Got our health down there. Got our cast bar right above that. I'm perfectly, perfectly fine with that. Um, we're gonna leave the chat and stuff over here. Let's see, what else do we got? All right, so in system, we've got our XP bar. I took this out and I realized, so that was a, something else I, I mentioned is uh, I never used the travel bar and I oftentimes did go over to my like um, class changing layout and look at the XP. I did get annoyed by not having the XP on my main uh, setup. So I'm gonna keep it this time. Uh, is that centered? What do we got? One, two, three, four-ish. One, two, three-ish. Something more like that. God, it's so hard. Like, I just feel like their grid's not centered. But I do have a lot of extra weight over here, so I know it's drawing my eye that way. That's fine. Where'd the music go? Come on, South Shroud. Why are you letting me down? You're just going to have me sitting here by myself. All right, we're going to go back. <laughs> we're going to go back to say, I'm not going to sit here in silence. We'll go to a different town, though. Let's go to uh, Limbs of the Mensa. Oh, never mind. Now you're going to kick in. That's fine. Okay, so let's just throw the XP bar there. I can figure out if it's uh, like actually centered later. It definitely isn't. Hmm. What do we got? One, two, three. One, two, three. And then three bars and some chain three. Okay, that actually is pretty centered. Okay. So, what else? We got our enemy list. I have liked having my enemy list over in this area. That's been perfectly fine. The party list, uh, I had it way off in the corner and I think I actually want to kind of like bring it in some because I want to be able to easily click on it as a healer and not have to go way up here to the top. So I think I might actually bring it down somewhere, but I definitely, you know, somewhere in this area. Uh, the limit gauge, I had that up at the top. I think that's perfectly fine being at the top as well. Uh, I like seeing it up there and honestly, it doesn't build quick enough for you to worry about it. The new game plus guide and scenario guide. I honestly don't care where that's at. So we'll figure that out later. Um, let's see status info enhancements other and then enfeeblements. We need to move those around the duty list. That's fine. Job gauges. We need to mess with. Alliance list is specifically for rating, which we haven't done too much of. Focus target bar is important. Target bar is important. Need to change my enemy list to something more ideal. Yeah. So there's not a lot of options for it. Um, but I do like having it over in this area. So let's see. I might need to uh, make a couple of vertical adjustments here because I like having my buffs above my parameter bar. So let's see what we can do. Let's take this XP bar, pull it all the way down. Okay, let's go to hot bars. We're going to drag our hot bars down. And we're going to go over and we're going to grab our parameter bar. We're not going to pull it too far, maybe right there. Let's see. Make sure that HP is, yep, it's still, still definitely there. Okay, then we're going to grab our, we're going to leave our progress bar where it is, but we're going to grab our status info enhancements and we're going to put this uh, right here 
in line with the HP bar. And then we're gonna save it. Now, you could get a ton of status enhancement buffs, but chances are you are not going to. Um, so let's see, do I have one? We've got bloodbath, right? So bloodbath, why is it way up there? Okay, it's where it's supposed to be. Okay, cool. Uh, it really looked like it was something or somewhere weird. Okay, we're gonna bring this up right about there. That's okay. Then we're gonna up our progress bar. It's right there. All right, so bloodbath is gone. Meditate. We've got our buff. So we can see it right there above our HP. You could go below the HP if you want to. Um, but I like to really keep track of my buffs. Uh, so. I want uh, another. Okay, so we can do true north. Into a cast. Yep, that looks perfectly fine to me. I like that. I wish there was a separate dungeon party list and raid party list as I like having dungeons a little slow, a little closer. Yeah. Okay. So then I like, I liked having my uh, food buff and stuff like off to the side somewhere. Um, maybe more like over here. Maybe not that close. So that'll let me know I have my food buff. I'm mounted, whatever the case may be. I might move that off to the side even further. We'll see. Okay. Okay. So next we have job gauges. Let's go ahead and take our hot bar. Let's take this hot bar four. We're gonna move it down some more. We're gonna grab our job gauges. So some jobs have one, some jobs have multiple. Either way, I like to keep it in simple mode. And we're just gonna put it right here. We'll grab the other one, throw that into simple mode. And then we're gonna put that basically on top of it. Hit save. And we got that all stacked up there as well. Oh. So basically we've got all our hotkeys down here that we're not really paying too much attention to. We've got uh, our buttons we might wanna push here. We've got our job gauge there, and then we're going to have our party, and I think we'll have our party and enemy stuff lined up over here. So it's going to box us in. It's going to be a little bit, uh, it might be a little bit too tight. This mount is cool as shit. What is this? Ah, that mount is amazing. Increased enfeeblements to 140% to see them better. Nice mount. I still only have two. I th I'm assuming you were talking about mine, but like this one is sick. It's very Power Rangers or Zoids. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, this might be a little cramped. I think. I, I think it's feeling a little cramped. Um. So let's see if we can't push out. Maybe it's about here with that. And with the hot bar. That feels that feels better. Yeah. Okay, so then let's go in. Let's get our HUD layout up again. We don't have anything hot bars wise going over here. We're not worried about any of these hot bars. So I am going to stack them down here on top of the chat for right now. Just, uh, we're going to turn them off. For right now. OK, 
Okay, cross hotbar we also don't care about, and I want to make this as small as possible because it's so huge. Okay. So system, we'll figure these out later. All right, so we have our party list. I kind of want to put the party list here, if I'm being honest. Like, after healing a bunch, I kind of want to put it here. Like in line with our bar. What settings do we have? Nothing, just size. Okay. So we've got between the progress bar and this, we've got basically two bars worth of space. So we're going, and we're a little bit off here. Not by a lot. There we go. Okay, so there to there. We got one box and three. There to there, one box and three. That's technically where it would be to give us enough space. And then line it up. I'm gonna leave it like this. I know it overlaps the chat, but I kinda wanna see. It's probably gonna overlap the chat fairly badly. But maybe not. And I can always move the chat. Uh, you just click on... Nope, not that. There's a way to move it. I don't remember. Make it smaller and larger. I forget what it is. Uh, but maybe, maybe we'll move the chat. And then we've got the enemy list. Which the enemy list, I think, so I might actually do like, uh, I was thinking I might do a tank, DPS, and healer. Like, this is where I would want the party list as a healer. But I don't need the party list there as any other role. So I was thinking I might actually do tank, heals, DPS, and then like a menu. So let's assume that we're not like if we're going to put the party down there if we're if we're healers, right? So for right now, we're just going to bring the party and put it down lower. Uh, that way it's not way up here off in the corner. For healing, my preference would be putting it above my hot bars and more of a horizontal layout. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing is there are some options for some of these things. Like uh, if you go in character configuration, I think UI settings, there's some stuff you can change. But a lot of this stuff, uh, you can't actually change. So let's see, party list, display party list, name display, full name, status effect icons, hide party list when solo. Alliance list, party sorting. Roll sort settings. So yeah, it doesn't look like we can change the layout in here anyway. Uh, so yeah, we'll just leave it like, like I said, right around in there. I'm actually going to move it so that it lines up with the chat border. So line up like that. I like it better than being way up in the corner. And then since we're gonna have that area on the side open, we'll come over here and we will place our enemy list right there. Uh, and we'll line this up with the kinky gauge as well. So we wanna have one, three, three. So one, three, three. I know that didn't make any sense at all. And that is okay. So we'll do the enemy list there. And then we've got our status info other. I like to take my enfeeblements and basically just mirror them over here uh, because generally speaking, I normally know what's going on with those. So right there. Okay. And then focus target bar. I've been putting that over here uh, with my job gauge and everything. And I think that is still okay because uh, mostly my focus target bar is coming in when I'm a healer. 
uh, or something like that. Or I want information about my job in context with this. So I'm like, oh, the boss is at X percent. I need to execute this. Or, oh, this guy's about to die. I need to execute this. And seeing that stuff in combination with my job gauge, I think is okay. And I don't have a focus target all the time or even all that frequently. So it doesn't stack up too, too much there. Now, I don't care about seeing the amount of gill I have like at all. So we're going to stack that up here. The server info, I actually do like putting that above the chat and scaling it down. Go like 80% and just line this up here. And we'll drag the party back, line it up, hit save, and just make sure that doesn't look too terrible. We need to adjust it a little bit. Still not loving that. That should be pretty good. Yeah, that works for me. And we can actually just bring the chat out. That's actually a little bit easier. <laughs> just adjust the chat box till it looks well. Well, till it looks good. Okay. Let's go back into HUD. So we've got our alliance list and our alliance list two. I think we will just put these up here above the party bar. So if we're in an alliance, then we have this info here if we need it. Uh, limit gauge will keep there. Gil, I don't care about. Uh, the mini map. I had down in the bottom corner. But I think we'll just put it there for right now. We'll plug in the duty list. We're going to keep the rest of this the same. Uh, except for <laughs> I'm going to get this main scenario guide out of here we'll put that up here new game plus we'll throw that up there and we'll save and i think what we're gonna do is go into palace of the dead and just see if this like plays okay the way it is which idea was a good idea <laughs> Okay, so let's get switched over to something that I can uh, get some levels on in Palace of the Dead. Uh, let's go with something I'm not from, like, I don't want to say I'm not familiar with, but let's go with something that um, is a little bit weird and out of my comfort zone. So we're going to do Red Mage. All right, so we're going to do Red Mage. And we're going to set up the HUD. And we're going to set up our the rest of our hotkeys as well because I don't have the Q or the shift Q, control Q, and that kind of stuff in here. So we're going to want to set that up. Okay. So with every job, we got to go in to the uh, balance gate or the, the job gauge, switch it to simple mode. And then line it up here. Okay, so we'll hit save on that. That should be okay. Let's jump in. We're gonna get our action set up. So we have repost. So oddly enough, like repost is not really our main thing that we're doing. It's actually jolt. So we're gonna do jolt a lot. And then repost is more of a thing that we do uh, with our job gauge because we want to have our black and white mana before we use our melee abilities. So I'm going to count that as our job gauge ability. HUD layout preference. Oh yeah. Tank DPS healer. Yeah. Um, so then we're going to have our Vare thunder, which gives us our black mana, our Vare arrow, which gives us our white mana. That's kind of our main little rotation there. We got Corpse of Corpse, or however you say that. That is a engagement skill. Uh, scatter 
is AoE. And it's like the AoE version of Jolt. Uh, Ver Thunder 2. Let's see. This is going to be a stronger version of what we already have going on. Black Mana by 7. So it does more damage. Okay, so this is an AoE. Single target. AoE. Vero is also AoE. So that's the AoE combos. Ver Fire. It can only be executed while Ver Fire is ready. So that's a proc based ability. I'm not sure where we're going to want to go with that one yet. Ver Stone is another one. Then we have Zwer Chow. So this is another one that is going to be upgraded based on our job gauge. Displacement is a back step. So that's going to be here. Fletch is just going to be an additional offensive ability we can use. Redoublement is going to be job gauge. Acceleration is... Uh, uh, it's a longer cooldown, but not too longer cooldown. Offensive ability, so we'll throw it on E. That's all the abilities we have there uh, for level 50. But we are going to be level 60 in Palace of the Dead. So let's go all the way through level 60 with the abilities. We have Moulinette. Okay, so this is an AoE that is tied to our job gauge, but I want to keep all AoE consistent across the top row. We have Cure, that's a defense. We have Contre Sixte, I don't know how to say, it. it's all French, I think, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 400 to target and all enemies nearby, right there. Embolden is a buff with 120 second cooldowns. So we're gonna put that here. Modification doubles our levels. Okay, so this is a big, minute and 20 second cooldown utility ability. So we're gonna throw that on the end over here. And that's everything for level 60. Okay, so then we have our uh, swift cast. Now we don't have, we have addle, which is like a CC, but it's got a 90 second cooldown. I actually prefer to put something like swift cast on the F key for casters. Um, and then we also have some additional uh, good utility with Lucid Dreaming. And then Surecast is a big two-minute cooldown, so we'll put that one there. And then we have Addle, which is just a weird CC. We'll throw that there. So then we need to plug in our Verifier and our Ver Stone, And I think we're just going to put those in four and five for right now. So that is what our abilities are going to look like for Red Mage with this setup feeling a little cramped down here but i don't know if it's going to matter because i don't really need to click anything down here now what i do need to do is set up my key binds so this is bar three right hot bar three uh <laughs> let's double check uh hot bars hot bar three okay yeah so let's go back to key binds Hot bars, hot bar three. Okay, Q E R F. So this one should be Shift Q. Yeah, okay. Shift E, Shift R, and Shift F. Yep, I'm fine with that. And then these are gonna be Control Q, Control E. Control R, Control F. Okay, I think that is good enough to rock and roll into Palace of the Dead. It looks like there's quite a bit of people here, so hopefully we'll be able to get in pretty quickly and test it out. But before we do that, let's go ahead and turn all of our sound effects back on here. Okay.
We should get in really quickly here. This is less than five minutes. I'm gonna take a chill pill. Woo! Oh, hey, I flip flopped. All right, so while we're waiting on the queue here, uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing on the UI or if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, basically, like right now, I feel pretty good about where I'm at in terms of the concept. There might be some tweaking on spacings and stuff like that for uh, the battle UI um, as far as that goes. Uh, the next like thing we'll be doing if this feels pretty good is uh, setting up the rest of the non-combat UI. Okay, so this I moved there on purpose. I do like having this somewhere, but let's see, we could do maybe like floor here and this here. All right, let's go into the HUD. Let's drag this up for now. Okay. I'm not too worried about the actual Palace of the Dead setup here. Oh, I don't have my sprint. That's one I need. Okay, so Jolt. Oh, that threw me off a lot. <laughs> Holy cow, that threw me off a lot. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing. I want my map over here for sure. We're going to do that, I think. Oh, oh, we got uh, AOE we can do. Yeah, normally I would have hit like my sprint by now. Oh, I don't have my auto run hot keyed on this mouse, I guess. My bad, you guys. My bad. I really hate this uh, mage UI, by the way. I'm gonna make sure my, yeah, my camera's not in the way. Cool. It's in the way of the map, but that's a different thing entirely. Okay. So we could leap in. We could grab another one. Back step. I like that. Feels pretty good. Okay, I definitely need to get my sprint on here somewhere. Sprint, I usually just click. Mother. Oh yeah. Okay. Got that swift cast on there. I forgot. So you can do like a really quick double heal on yourself. That's pretty sick. All right. I'm gonna go this way. Just see if I can get so I need to go here. Okay, and then. Oh, nope. Into my class abilities. I need to boost my black magic a little bit. Okay.
dual cast again. Feeling pretty good. Cameron, I love Palace of the Dead. Uh, I'm a big fan of Palace of the Dead as well. Okay. Uh, one of the, the our, we did our first uh, free company events uh, last week, I think. Uh, last week. And uh, we did Palace of the Dead runs. And I'm looking forward to doing more of those in the free company uh, here in the future. Now that uh, after this week, I'll have a set work schedule for a little while. I'm pretty pumped about uh, being able to get those Palace of the Dead runs going. And then eventually when people get high enough level, we'll do Heaven on High. Um, we'll probably do some uh, Southern Boston Front as well. Okay, fine. No, the landmine. Oh, I love that instant cast. I've been really, really used to hitting shift for my AOE, so it's going to take some adjusting for me to get used to that, but I think I'm okay with it. We got our debuffs over here. Out pretty easy to see. Dual cast, not swift cast. There we go. Much excitement when they add data center visits. I'll be excited to come and say hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's coming in uh, 6.1, right? Or that's... No, that's cross region, isn't it? Oh, the gloom spreads. How about the gloom doesn't spread? How about that? Hey... Oh, God. That's going to hurt. Wow. Wow. Okay. I got absolutely destroyed. I was trying to be a little... Not cocky, but I was like... I was getting from <laughs> this is why I don't play casters it's, I like I should have moved out I 100% should have moved out of the AOE there but I was just like man it's not gonna kill me that absolutely destroyed me oh well that was a new move on my part yep let's go oh, let's go party ty all right, I won't do that again, I guess. Oh, God. I think I want to have Sprint at the top. That gets used more than, like, anything else. After they give me my Australian uh, servers. Yeah, I know that'll be nice. There's quite a few of you um, that watch and are on Discord that have the uh, Australian servers. And we have... Yeah, we're just going to... I'm not even going to get to test this because we have all the rage... All the Pomanders of Rage. We're on floor 56. We got 57, 58. At least two floors we're going to be doing that. So, Oof. Schmack them. Chloe Cannoli, you get the award for best name in the group. I love cannolis. <laughs> My wife's Italian, and I don't like Italian food. But I like cannolis, so I, I at least have that going for me. Maximum HP decreased.
Well, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, the UI right now. Like, I don't feel like it's getting in my way of seeing what I need to see. The exception to that is probably this over here and maybe this over here being where it is. But I think, again, that's more of a uh, DPS thing than it is uh, a UI. Th like I said, the party, I would move the positioning of. For like DPS, I'd probably put it up here. For tank, I'd probably put it up here. For healer, I'd probably put it right here, <laughs> right next to me. Like where this is, put it right there on the opposite side. I wonder if I can turn the buffs so that they are going the other way. Or they display underneath or something like that. Uh, I'll have to check. Because that would definitely influence how I put that together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why? I got you, Chloe Cannoli. I won't let you down. Ain't getting here to eat my flatbread. Yeah, so let me get the little well-fed buff right there. That works for me. From what I can tell you, you, you only really have like two or three buffs like that anyway. The gloom spreads. Hey. Might actually get to do some stuff this time. Alright, so... Oh, I cast the wrong one. Dang. Need to get my black... Black magic back up. Do I have any fast cast stuff? What do I have? I'll just fletch. Yeah, that, that feels pretty good. I like having the, uh... I like having the extras in there. The shift R. That's, yeah, the shift R control R stuff, that definitely works. That was a keybind set I didn't have before this, and so I like it. All right, what do we got? Uh, increased damage. Yeah, sure. Let's let's throw some buffs up here. What do we got here? All right, let's go up. Probably should have used that dual cast before it went away. Oh, okay. So the first one was in. Yeah, there's like a flow here for, uh, yep. I'm off my rhythm with the dual cast. So I need to cast and then we need to get back on rhythm with that. Yeah. I mean, overall that felt, that felt pretty good. Felt good about where all my info was. Cannoli, stay in. Nice. I got to award the cannoli for the best name. Let me get that XP bar. Hey, we leveled up 51. Nice. We got two sacks. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely like that. Uh, I like... I like the combat UI there. I think I 
probably do want to try setting up the HUD like tank heals DPS. Um, so we'll do that here in a second. Let's see if I get anything cool. Probably not. It's not too bad, but sometimes I'll be out of an AOE telly and then still get hit. Currently leveling a monk because all my friends play tanks as a sole role. Man. That makes sense. Pairing with a tank uh, as a monk means you can do your positionals. Oh, I got a pet. That is the fourth pet I've gotten from Palace of the Dead. All right, got to see what it looks like, obviously. Uh, let's see, character uh, minions. Oh, oh, okay, it's the boss, uh, the boss. <laughs> oh, that's pretty sick. I like that. Very nice. We'll keep you for a while. Okay, so let's uh, figure out the rest of what we want to do with the UI. So I do a lot of Palace of the Dead and have it on high. So it's definitely important for me that I have a place where that information can go. I wasn't loving having it over here. It made everything feel pretty like heavier than it was already. Uh, so I don't know. I had it between the chat and the party list before, and that felt pretty good. Um, and also the map as well. So uh, I am not worried about the inventory grid on here, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, I am also... I'm not super worried about the main menu, but I don't want to turn it off yet. So we're just going to slam it down here for right now. I'm going to drag the mini map into the corner because uh, I prefer having it down there I'll put our scenario guide up in the corner here duty finder here I'll put the new game plus guide right there on top so that'll be perfectly fine and then the target bar uh, we're just going to one two three four five one two three four five uh, we'll bring that down just a bit. And then our notices, uh, I've just kind of kept these over off in the corner. And so that is it. Duty gauge. I don't even know what this is for. We're just going to stick it up there. Okay, so we've got our system. we got our hot bars. We got our basic layout. I think everything is pretty much where I would kind of want it to be. Um, like I said, the exception here is I don't know if I would like my character panel being over here, but it's at least different. The pet hot bar, I was just kind of sticking out over here to the side because I don't really care about this at all. Uh, and I was making it as small as I could. Yeah, I can go there for all I care. Edda storyline was creepy. The Tamtara lady. Uh, I don't remember. It's been so long since I watched the cutscenes. I don't remember what her storyline was. I just skipped through all of them now. Okay, so let's do this real quick. We're going to go HUD layout. So we're going to use one, okay? And uh, we're going to assume that one is going to be for the tanks. Then let's go ahead and we'll do two. So let's go copy one to two. Yep. And then let's go copy one to three. Okay. And then, so we're on HUD one. So let's assume HUD one is gonna be the tank. So we're gonna want low party. We're gonna want enemy list right next to us. Okay, we go to HUD two. And then for HUD two, we're gonna want, uh, we'll do healer for HUD two. Not as concerned about the enemy list. We do want the party list uh, a lot closer to us. So we're gonna line this up with our focus target bar. 
most likely, like right there. And then we will stick with that. We're going to see what this looks like in Palace of the Dead. Um, we might want to make some adjustments, but let's save that. And then let's go to three. And in three, we're going to assume that we don't care about the party at all. So we're just going to put them up here out of the way. And then if we have a raid going on, an alliance raid, we'll put that stuff here. And then the enemy list, we're also not overly concerned about, but we'll keep it there because it makes it easy to click on enemies. So tank, we got low party, so we can keep an eye on everybody, but the enemy list is more important so we can maintain threat. For this one, we've got the party list uh, and the focus target bars over there. Uh, let's see, do we want to move the party list up? We're gonna try it here. We're gonna see what it looks like. I don't think it's gonna look good here. I don't think it'll look good there, but we're gonna try it. Uh, so let's jump in with one of our healers and find out. All I really have I could do, yeah. <laughs> Let's set up Astrologian since it's confusing as all hell. See if I can play it better this way. So we're gonna set it up up to level 60. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is gonna deal damage. Damage to me, so for healing, uh, it's a little, a little interesting. So I want my main heals to be on my bar. So we're gonna do Malefic. We don't know where that's gonna go yet. Uh, Benefic is our single target heal. We've got Combust, which is damage over time. Uh, we've got Light Speed, which is a big buff. So we'll put that here. Helios is our AOE heal. Usually what I do is I do heals across the bottom, then damage. We're gonna, we're gonna do it this way. Damage. Damage. Heals. Ascend. Resurrects the target. We'll put that over here. Essential Dignity. 40 second restores targets HP. So that's another instant heal we have. Benefic 2. Draw is part of our class bar. Diurnal adds regen to certain actions. So let's go ahead and throw that in offense, maybe. Undraw is part of our job. Play, uh, I think is the one we're gonna wanna hit a lot. So we'll put that one on there. Uh, redraw, Aspected Benefic, that's a heal. Aspected Helios, that's a heal. Gravity is damage, combust is damage but that is just an upgrade to that ability we already have so we're okay nocturnal sect is some weird thing <laughs> this class confuses the shit out of me uh let's see that's a two minute cooldown minor arc arcana looks like a utility divination and big cooldown Malefic 2. Okay, that's just going to be an upgrade. Collective Unconsciousness. Big cooldown. Celestial Opposition. Oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can figure this out real quick. So we have draw, undraw, redraw, and play. I want to put play uh, in a place where we can actually hit it. 
Now, what play is going to do is it's going to give us a buff to uh, one of our friends. So we're actually going to going to put that in F since we don't really have any CC that we want to hit. Actually, I want to keep this stuff consistent across all of my healers. So we're going to put the same stuff in as we did before. Oh, uh, we haven't set up a healer yet. Okay, so we have uh, Asuna, which is good utility. We have Swift Cast, and we have Lucid Dreaming. Those are all pretty important. Repose, I'm not too worried about. Rescue, not too worried about. Okay, so we need to get all these on the bar, too. And Lucid Dreaming. Okay, so let's figure this out. This is all we have that does actual damage. I'm fine with that. We can probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got single target, damage over time, AoE. Pretty straightforward on the damage stuff. Then we have our actual abilities. Okay. And then we've got seven weird abilities here. Okay, so we have a regular heal. We've got a stronger regular heal. We've got an instant cast. Then we have an AOE. Okay. So what are these? Restores own HP and the HP of all nearby party members. Can only be executed while under the effect of Diurnal Sect. Which I don't know if we have yet. Do we have it? Neutral sect. Diurnal sect. Okay, okay. It's, uh, where'd it go? Here it is. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so we can use this to then trigger this. So let's set that up there. Aspected benefit can only be used under the effect of diurnal sect. Again, so this is single target. So let's switch those. So now we know we hit E, then we can do Shift E or Control E. That makes sense to me. Okay, Nocturnal Sect. Are we actually using that with anything? I don't think we're using it with anything yet. Okay, we've got a couple of abilities here. Okay, so the this is used in conjunction with some of our larger cooldown abilities. So we'll figure that out in a second. Okay, so we've got that, that, AoE, instant. I think those are all good. I like uh, what we have right here. Okay, so we have draw. I think we want draw and play to be in the same space and then redraw and then undraw. I'm okay with that possibly being somewhere else. Actually redraw, draw and redraw have 30 second cooldowns. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I don't know about. No, uh, yeah. Let's figure out what the rest of this stuff does. Okay, so we have Asuna, which I'm going to put on F. We have Swift Cast, which I'm going to put on F. And we have Lucid Dreaming, which I'm also going to put on F. Uh, Repose, I'm not worried about, like I said. It's a utility that will just click when we need to click it. Rescue, we can put on Q somewhere. Converts currently drawn Arcanum into Lord of the Crowns when Balance, Arrow, or Spear, or Lady of the Crowns when Bowl, Ewer, or Spire. Okay, so that's definitely related to our cards. Generate an etheric bond with target party member each time you cast a single target spell on them. Okay, so that's a 20 second. Um, okay, that stays here. And we're going to put our sprint right there. Sure cast. Okay, so that's one of our big utilities for our roll. 
We've got Divination. Increases damage dealt by self and party members. So this is also related to our cards. With light speed. Reduces cast time for spells. Another big cooldown. Okay, then we have Collective Unconsciousness. Creates a celestial ring around the caster. Depending on... Okay, Diurnal reduces damage taken. Nocturnal grants healing over time. Okay. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them here. Restores own HP and the HP of all party members. If you have Nocturnal Sect, you get a Magic Barrier. Okay, let's do this. 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 And that. Okay, I think we have that set up. I think. Oh, we just need to change the order on these. Uh, yeah. So this will let us undraw a card. This will let us convert a currently drawn card to Lord of Crowns or Lady of the Crowns. And then this will increase. It's an offensive big boost. We've got damage abilities here. We've got heals. Then over here, we've got our whole nocturnal set chain. We've got our diurnal set chain. And then we have our... Uh, we're going to switch these. This set. So we'll have all of our play stuff on E. And then we'll have this diurnal set stuff on R. Then we've got utilities on F. All right, let's give this a shot. This is definitely going to be a good test because I have no idea what I'm doing on Astrologian. Sorry, I'm getting snacky. Oh, we got to fix our job bar. I start keto tomorrow, so of course I'm like carb binging because that's definitely the smart thing to do is when you're getting ready to give something up, you should definitely binge it <laughs> right beforehand. So I have pizza and cheese sticks. Wow, why is this Q taking so long? I'm going to switch mice. This vertical mouse did wonders for me for so long, but I've actually found that it just like tires me out now. And I don't love this one because it's pretty small. I wish it were bigger, but it's the only normal mouse I have right now. There we go. All right. Okay, so already I can tell, like we probably want to drop this down. I'm assuming that for eight people, this is going to be, this is going to suck. I wonder if we can, can we not have this? This is where I run into some problems with Final Fantasy is I want to be able to have this grow top down, but that's fine. All right, so we want to shift E to draw a card. So that's going to give us the arrow, which is going to give us a lunar thing when we get it, I believe. So then we can pick uh, one of our 
targets and we can play our card to give them a buff. Okay, we can do our AOE. Gravity. Oh, did I do the opposite and put my AOE in the middle? <laughs> I did. I can't help it. I did it. Okay, let's switch it so I can get used to it. How's the chair? The chair is great, actually. Like, I haven't noticed that I'm sitting in a chair. And that, I feel like, is really the way it should be. All right, let's draw another card. We drew bowl. Oh, we gotta use it in combat, okay. So we don't wanna cast it until we're in combat. And we wanna lose our mouse. Damn, I did it again, I did it too late. Some AOE heals. Yeah, I think when you forget that you're sitting in a chair, that's how you know you have a good chair. Because you're not like, oh, my back hurts. Oh, why am I slouching? Oh, what's wrong with my leg? Why am I like flopped over halfway like this? All good signs, in my opinion. Okay, so I need to get a focus target here, I think. Um, that I can just cast these buffs on. Come on, why didn't they give me a buff? I was in combat. That is super annoying. So, I want to cast um, Control 2 to get into combat. And then, there we go. Okay, we got Lunar. Okay, got it. Oh. Hmm, okay. I'm trying to cast my heal as my damage ability. I'm I'm brilliant. <clears throat> yeah, I'm all over the place with these hotkeys right now. Okay, let's draw a card. So this one is gonna give us the moon. So we want to redraw. This one's gonna give us the sun, which is okay. Okay, let's get our focus target. Are we still in combat? Yes. No, we weren't. God, that is fucking annoying. That is really fucking annoying. So, there we go, draw a card, we got the moon again, cycle cards, we got the moon again, cycle cards, we got the sun this time, but now we're out of fucking combat, so we can't fucking, oh! okay, I'm gonna be swearing here for a minute, okay, boost there, grab her, cast the buff, get the thing, do the stuff, Get confused and cast your damage dealing ability instead of your heal, because you're a scrub. Forget to put your sprint on the bar. Amazing. Okay, 
Draw another card. We got the moon. Let's redraw. Okay, we got the right one here. So we need to get into combat and then cast this on somebody. Boom, right there. Let's go focus target, cast. We got all three. So now we are ready to do our big boost. Shift S for swift cast into an AOE. All right, we're gonna heal up big bad booty bandit. There we go. Let's go, big AOE boost. Why are you shining? Benefic, why? Oh, it restores critical hit. Oh, okay, the next one will restore critical HP. Okay. I'm getting in the groove. Getting in the groove. Okay, we got this shit, right? Restores target as HP or does... Oh, okay, does AOE. So we have that as an option as well. Wow, somebody... Wow, do we have buffs I can get rid of here? Or debuffs? We do. Let's go. All right, let's get in combat. Can't draw a card because of our stupid debuff. Cannot use dis abilities. That sucks. Dot him up. That dude got exploded. Dots, on dots, on dots, draw a card, spin. All right, we got one. Heal ourselves. Bad booty bandit. There we go. Draw a card. All right, let's redraw. We got the moon. That's good. It's buff. We're gonna go pure white. Pure white. Pure white. Who the hell are you? Oh, you're Ace of Hell. Okay. Give you the buff. There we go. Okay. You need to draw another card. Not the right one. Let's redraw. Redraw. We didn't get it. Redraw. We didn't get it. So if we didn't get it, we can convert it, right? So what did that convert it to? Okay, it gave her Lord of Crowns. Oh, so if we don't need it, we can convert it, I guess. But what's the condition for that? I know I'm getting into, like... <laughs> Astrologian trying to figure this out. Let's see. Only one Arcanum can be effect. Okay, so if we draw a card, okay, this one got us the one we wanted. So we'll hit that. We'll boost Asa. We got everything we need for our buff, which is good. We're on 458, so we still have a ways. All right, let's go ahead and let's just use Divination here. up big bad booty bandit where you at are you at big booty i'm coming all right we need a shift f into a one where you at and he's out on the wrong person all right let's draw a card Okay, we got our buff. Oh, I forgot about the target bar being off center because of the cast bar. I don't like that shit. <laughs> We're gonna have to change that uh, for sure. All right. Almost ready to draw another card. All right, we got the spire, that's cool. Mm 
Alright, cool. so we can redraw or we can convert it. We're trying to get a buff for the boss, so let's redraw. Damn, every time. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so since we got the, the same symbol every time, uh, we can probably just go ahead and uh, let's, let's boost her. And then we're going to go to Asa and we're going to give her the... Lord of Crowns. We're gonna draw another card. It's not what we need it, needed, so we can give him Lady of the Crowns. Uh, we'll get our debuff going there. Alright, now we'll just kind of focus on some damage and some heals until we can redraw again. All right, let's redraw. We didn't get it. Hey, we got the one we wanted, so I'll boost her, and then that gives us our party buff just in time to be done anyway. Uh, okay. I mean, come on. Thanks for all the UI tips, calling it a night. Good evening, all. All right, I'll see ya. Be sure to tune back in later, because uh, I should be doing uh, more of the UI here now that I've kind of figured out that, yeah, I'm cool with this. Except for that target bar. Oh, that's got to get tweaked. Okay, so let's go HUD. Um, we'll go back to one target bar. Uh, we're going to do independent target information. We're going to put the health bar of the target right here. We're going to put the target status right there. And we're going to put the target progress bar right there and save. And then we're going to take all that and move it up just a bit. Maybe a little bit more. Just so we can see everything properly. Cool. Uh, but therein lies the issue. We're going to need to actually do more like that. And then target status. Target progress bar. Save. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty. Is that does that looks center? A little bit off. Looks like maybe we can go over another notch. Yeah. That looks a little bit better. Now that's centered up above us. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to do that for all. Well, I'm not going to have to do it for all of them because, um, you know, I'll have the, the layouts for the three different roles, but okay. All right. I think that puts us in a pretty good spot for the combat stuff. And, hmm. I think we're probably, we actually, I think we might call it there uh, and work on the non-combat UI in a different stream. Just to break it up, we're already at two and a half hours. That's a pretty long stream, I think, for anybody to watch. Uh, so I think we'll call it here. If you're around and you want to play, I'm probably going to stay online and continue to play. 
the game, continue to level up characters and stuff like that, uh, and continue to iterate on this UI and try to get used to it. So uh, if you're interested in running some Palace of the Dead or anything like that, uh, feel free to message me on Discord or message me in the free company if you're a part of that. So, uh, yeah, you guys, I uh, appreciate you tuning in. I hope you learned uh, some stuff about kind of like how I am going to work out this UI, um, what goes into the process for me cr for creating a UI. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comment section below. And uh, other than that, don't forget my mini promo. Uh, Iggy's going to be opening her etsy shop here in the next uh probably month or so and uh she's gonna have two beanies and they're both themed after final fantasy and uh we're excited to show those off for you guys so uh stay tuned for that i'll keep giving little mini previews when i can i think maybe this week i'll have the paladin one paladin beanie to show off uh in addition to this one so all right everybody thanks for tuning in uh this evening and uh, i'll see you on the next live stream Peace.